live a life that is worthy of emulation. Live a life that can attract somebody. Do you desire to be fruitful? The qualification for fruitfulness is that you must abide in him. This case is hereby when men shall say that is a casting down you will announce that there is a lifting up somebody stand on your feet and say I'm a candidate of blessing you are not talking. Somebody wants to see you cry. Say I'm a candidate of blessing. Don't, don't let their words affect you. Somebody say he won't answer you. Shout I'm a candidate of blessing. Hello, I'm a product of miracle. I don't know who lost hope in you. I don't know who believes that nothing good can come out of you. Today, I'm standing on the altar. The altar that carries both the former and the latter glory. Today, I'm standing on the altar. Hey! Standing upon Christ, a solid rock. Over your head, I tell you, we rain, you will not fall. You will shine, you will not go dry. If you hear me shout an amen, that will give somebody some trouble. Shout, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me shout, it is well with me. Ah, you are not saying it like I expect you should. Say it is well with me. It is well. It is well with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. If it is well with you, shout, hey! Professor, from tomorrow morning, a new door will open up for somebody. A great door will open up for somebody. Anytime I talk like this, things happen. From tomorrow morning, expect the opening of new doors. From tomorrow morning, expect doors to open. From tomorrow morning, expect visitation. From tomorrow morning, expect a turn around. Somebody holler is happening for me. We're going to talk on the sixth church in the book of Revelation chapter number three. This church is a special kind of church. There is something about revelation. Revelation is revelational. Revelation is unveiling. Revelation the deeper you go the deeper it becomes and more interesting it becomes. It will get to a point by the time we cross some chapters, it will become fearful and helpful. Both at the same time. But today let us talk about the sixth church. I'm rushing and running there is no church that I finished everything that I know about the church. Every word used in Revelation is not to be swept under the carpets. Every word is for a reason. That is why it is revelation. And the book of Revelation is not the revelation of God. In the church we are treating today, you will find out that this is not revelation of God. This is revelation of of Jesus Christ. Every religion on earth, every power on earth, every force on earth, 
is connected one way or the other, either legally or illegally, to God the Father. Every power on earth, every force on earth that is in existence are all connected to God the Father. That is the reason the name of God the Father does not bound the devil. That is why the native doctor which wizard does not fear the name God. They fear the power of God, but they do not fear the name of God. Can I talk to you? That is the reason every child of God must know that there is only one name that at the mention of that name, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. And that is the name of who? Somebody will look at me from there and say, this man Tognadu, he has come again. But my Bible said he has exalted his word far above his name. We wanted to run into confusion. He said the name I'm talking about is El Shaddai. Has exalted his word far above his name, El Shaddai. Far and above that at the mention of that name every kneel bows every tongue confesses that Jesus is the Lord a native doctor can use the name of God but cannot use the name of Jesus let me shock you let me shock you there is no native doctor that know what he is doing, that can do anything and send it out for operation without permission from God the Father. They must take permission from God the Father for a smooth operation in the spirit. God the Father is the God of all flesh. is the God of everybody. Amdraba will call him, he will answer him. Native doctor will call him, he will answer him. Witch will call him, he will answer her. We said, we call him, he will answer him. The reason you cannot defeat every witch and every wizard around you is that some of them call on God, but you don't know that they call on God. But they do. They give him his way. That is why you, when anybody go to a native doctor, after preparing any sham, the native doctor raises it and speaks to it. The native doctor wakes up in the morning. He brings out his skull and all. In the olden days, no matter where you come from, in Igbo land, for instance, where we are, you will see native doctors. They will bring the, 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 the what the Igbo call unzu. They will bring unzu. They will bring a do. Early in the morning, as they raise it up, the first person they will call is Eke Kerowa. Who is Eke Kerowa? God the creator. They will give him his own. They will offer the sacrifice unto him. He can accept sacrifice from anybody and turn against anybody. That's not my teaching for today, but I'm taking you somewhere. The other time, he is God who caused the Moabites. The nation of Moab was caused. But there was war between the people he cursed and his chosen, his own chosen generation. He said they get chosen generation, the people set aside for himself. There was war between the Israelites and the people of Moab that God cursed. And the Bible said the Israelites began to kill the Moabites, began to defeat the Moabites. And the king of Moab looked at the defeat that it was painful. He took his hair apparent, took his hair apparent. The 
prince of the land that was supposed to take over from him. He took him to the altar, slaughtered him for sacrifice. God changed his mind. The Bible said God turned. The Moabites began to kill the Israelites. And you begin to ask yourself what went on. He can accept sacrifice from anybody. But Jesus Christ does not accept sacrifice from anybody to go against his own. And that is why he said, Father, as many as you committed into my hands have I not lost any. And he turned around to say, nobody gets to the Father except. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no occultic man that does not give God his way. The water spirit give him his way. The land give him his way. The sea give him his way. The trees give him his way. Every spiritual person on earth give God the creator his way. And there is something about him. He is the God of everybody. Don't make a mistake. He is the God of everybody. He doesn't prefer you to anybody. That is why he didn't say anything. The only thing he said is this. Is my only begotten son. He didn't say he's my only son. God doesn't have an only son. He only has only begotten. He doesn't have an only son. He's only begotten son. And I, I had explained that here one day. So you, you already know. Good. He only has begotten son. The native doctor dealing with you. And you say, God will fight you. God will deal with you. That native doctor may be giving God something you are not giving him. And if the native doctor gives God something you are not giving him, you will be surprised. God will allow him to do some things. That's who God is. It's in the word of God. In the course of this revelation, you will see it. It will be very clear to you. God will allow him to deal with you. There are people in your village, they are killing people. And you every day asking God, where are you? God is where he is. They know what to do. They know how to give God his own. Huh? The offer sacrifice. You wake up in the morning, you said with your mother that you were a child of God, but you can wake up in the morning and walk out of the house without praying, but they will not try it. Eh? Yeah. They will not try it. In the morning, they will stand up. But you wake up in the morning and you just come out, leaving yourself empty. And he wonders that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Let's go to the book of Revelation. I want to talk on the sixth church in Revelation. We've talked five already. We are talking the sixth one today, which is in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse number 7. Verse number 7. Is anybody there? And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, to right. the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? To the pastor of the church in Philadelphia, right? To the bishop of the church in Philadelphia, right? To the head of the church in Philadelphia, right? Right. Now, Philadelphia. Unlike the five other churches we have treated already, is a church that has its own uniqueness. It's a church with a difference. For those of you who know your Bible, you know that the church of Philadelphia is called the church of brotherly love. The Philadelphia church is called the church of brotherly love. 
Now he said to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? The city was named Philadelphia by the then king of Lydia. The king of Lydia at that time had a brother whose name is called Philadelphia. This his brother was so close to him. Both of them were so, so close. So when he was naming the city, he named the city after his brother and called it Philadelphia. And it became the city of brotherly love. That's how this name was given. Oh yeah, let's proceed. These things says he who is holy. Excuse me. Excuse me. The Bible that taught me. The word of God is so rich and great. He said these things says he that is holy. Uh -huh. He who is true. Number one. He said this thing says he that is holy. After the holy you see comma. Eh? Yes, sir. He that is true. After the true, you see, comma. comma. Uh -huh. He who has the key of David. He who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts. He who opens and no one shuts. Uh -huh. hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he who shuts and no one opens. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, hold on. If I come to you and I say this thing says he that is holy. Says he that is true. You will get confused. What is he talking about? But if you say it to the church in Philadelphia they know what he's talking about. And I told you that he presents himself to every church, every man, according to your experience in life and with him. Did I say that to you? Now, when he said to the Philadelphia church, he that is holy, they said, talk to me. We, we're looking for he that is holy. He said, he that is true, he that does not deceive. He said, I am he that is true. He that will not tell you lies. And what was he talking about? Can I talk to you here? Can I, can, I, can I talk to you why he introduced himself this way to the church of Philadelphia? He introduced himself this way to the church of Philadelphia because the city of Philadelphia is a city that is located in the then Asia Minor, but the Turkey of today, and Philadelphia is still there up until now. And even that name, Philadelphia, there is a city in America, a state in America that is named Philadelphia. And the one funny thing is that the same meaning of Philadelphia Philadelphia of Revelation is the meaning of the Philadelphia in America. It's the city of brotherly love. But hear this. This city in 17 AD mm, I'm coming. In 17 AD fixed a very deadly earthquake. The earthquake Destroyed the city of Philadelphia. Destroyed it so badly that the then emperor of Rome gave a verdict that Philadelphia should be exempted from task for five years. For five solid years, there was no task, no levy from the city of Philadelphia as a result of the earthquake that destroyed the city in 17 AD. After that happened, they were exempted from task for five solid years. The then emperor came to Philadelphia and made a promise to the city of Philadelphia and said to them, don't worry. Don't cry too much. Don't lament so much. The Roman Empire 
we will help you. We will assist you. We will come to rebuild this city. We will come to rebuild your major source of income which has been destroyed by the earthquake. And said to them, we will bring you back to ship. We will rebuild this city. We will put everything back in shape. But did not do it. So, to them, they were disappointed. To them, they were not shown love. To them, the emperor was not being truthful. So now, Jesus want to talk to them. And he started by saying, he who is what? He who is holy. He that does not play games. He that does not say another thing and do another thing. He that is pure. He that is clean. I am that man that is clean. I'm the one writing to you. He that is true. You have been lied to, but I'm the one that is true. I'm talking to you as he that is true. The Philadelphia people, the Philadelphia church will understand him. Is this, is this taken? They will understand him. He that is holy. He that is what? True. Uh -huh. He that holds the key of David. This one is very important. I will explain it to you. And this one is coming direct to the church. He that holds the key of David. When you hear he that holds the key of David in the book of Revelation, too many people will think it's a mystery. Too many people will think, what is he talking about? But for the church in Philadelphia, it was not a mystery. Why was it not a mystery? I explained to you. Hey! Philadelphia was located at a strategic place south worlds of Tokyo. Where Philadelphia was located is like or at the middle of a road that leads to the other side of Tokyo. And they have a gate that they put there if you want to go to that side of Turkey, you must pass through Philadelphia. If they do not open the gate for you, you will not pass. If they do not open the gate for you, you will not pass through. You will not cross over to the southern side of then, of then Asia Minor, but to their Turkey. So he said to them, he that holds the key. Most times, uh, there are times you will get to the gate and the gatekeeper will lock the gate. You will have to stand there until the gatekeeper finds out from you where you are going and when you are to come back. So he said, he who holds the key of David. The Philadelphia church said we can understand because without the key, you cannot cross. Oh, come on now. Eh? Now, this is for the city of Philadelphia. But for the church of Philadelphia, they have another experience. But how we get there? After he who holds the key of David, eh? He, he said, who opens and no one shuts. Did you say it? When he opened the gate, then you can pass through. But, why was he talking to Philadelphia church like this? There are times... The gatekeepers will be up to six, eight on duty. One will say open. As one is open, the other one is shutting the door. And said, I'm not convinced. You will not cross. You will not pass through this gate. So another person open for you and another person close the gate. The Philadelphia people understands this. And he said, but I'm the one who opens and no one can shut. When he said that to the Philadelphia church, they understood him. They knew what he was talking about. He said, when I open, nobody can shut the door that I opened. But among the gatekeepers, one can open and another one will shut the door. But he said, I'm the one 
who opens the door and nobody can shut the door. The Philadelphia church said, talk to us. You got something to say. You know where we are coming from. You understand our story. And he said to them again, I'm the one that if I shut the door, nobody can open it. For one gatekeeper can shut the door and go out. Another gatekeeper will come from the back and open the gate and ask you to pass. So he said, but when I shut my own, nobody opens it. Is this one clear? Can we make progress now? Okay. For the church in Philadelphia, for Christians in Philadelphia, I will explain before I push it forward. This is the second church among the seven churches that Jesus had nothing against. First was the church in Smyrna. He had nothing against the church. Now, the church in Philadelphia, he has nothing against this church. And I will give you the reason. Then, Christians we are being accommodated in most places of the world by the Judaizers. Because you know that Judaism is the mother of Christianity. You understand what I mean? That was why I preached a message in Oklahoma, America that tear down many believism of people when I declared that Jesus Christ was not a Christian. I preached it so hard. I knock it so hard. When I introduced the topic, it was like the head of some pastors will blow off. It's like they were going to get angry with me and say, what is he talking about? But by the time I was true, everybody started nodding their head. Because Judaism gave birth to Christianity. Jesus Christ was actually a Judaizer. That is why in proper theology, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not New Testament. But in primary theology, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are all New Testament. And when you study primary theology, you meet them as New Testament books. But if you want to talk to me, I will tell you that Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 is not a New Testament. But chapter 2 the New Testament began because he said ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you then you shall be my witness and when you become my witness you are now a Christian but in the book of Matthew Judaism was practiced in the book of Mark Judaism was practiced in the book of Luke Judaism was practiced in the book of John Judaism was practiced Jesus practiced Judaism. That is why he spat on the ground and mixed his saliva with the sand and put inside the eyes of a blind person. And what is that ritual? But what do I do today? In the name of Jesus, open your eyes and you open. Why? He sent for his word and his word healed them. Philadelphia is a different thing altogether. I pointed out to you. In Philadelphia, they had a synagogue. In that synagogue was a place where Judaizers go to worship. You know, anytime you hear the name synagogue, something comes into your mind. What is that? A place of worship for Judaizers. Eh? Judaism. Now, they had a synagogue. And, but as at that time, the Jews were also the people who are Christians. Majorly. Come on now. But there is a division among them. What is the division? 
Some who believe that Jesus has not come. And some who believe that Jesus has come. Those who believe that Jesus has come joined him and became Christians. Christians simply means Christ-like. They began to do like Christ and began to follow the steps of Christ. But because they were living in a place that is not a Jewish land, in the city of Philadelphia, Christians also come to the place of the synagogue for worship. And the Judaizers, all of them come together because as at that time, the synagogue is like the place where they socialize. That is their meeting point. That is where you relate with friends and family. That is where you meet your relations. That is where you meet anybody you want to meet. Anybody you want to see. It is during the time when you people gather in the synagogue that you meet one another. Now, initially there was no division between the Judaizers and the Christians. All of them worshipped together inside that place of the synagogue. Inside the temple, all of them worshipped together all of them come there together but at a time those who are Christians began to preach about Jesus resurrection they began to preach about Jesus being the only way being the only truth and being the only life and they began to win some Judaizers to join them began to win some outside to join them and began to win some who are not Jews to join them and they started coming into the synagogue and then the Judaizers gathered and said no right now we shall stop them from entering the synagogue and those who were Christians we are now shut out we are now sent out of the synagogue and the doors of the synagogue now became closed if you come there you will hit the door somebody will look from inside and look outside if they say you they will discover that you are one of those who is now a Christian they will ask you to go they will not open the door so Christians at this time we are not allowed to enter the synagogue to worship they were not allowed to enter the church to worship and now their lives were in danger Number one, they were shut out from friends. They were shut out from relations. They were shut out from society. Now, the more the people around see you, during the time you should have been in the synagogue, you are not in the synagogue. They will ask you, what has gone wrong? The first thing that will happen, they will now know that you are no longer with the Jews. Your life will now be in danger. Anybody you have problem with will kill you because it is in the synagogue that they have rules and they have the scroll where their names are written where their addresses are written where they protect one another once you are a Christian they will remove your name from the list they will clean your name from that book they will clean your name from the school they will not allow you to enter they will shut the door against you nobody that was your friend before is permitted to talk to you outside. Wherever they meet you, you are like an outcast. You are like somebody that is evil. You are labeled. Nobody accepts you. Nobody wants to relate with you. Nobody wants to open that door for you to come into the synagogue. And the Jews, they have something. And what do they have? They know that David is their king. And Jesus said, the one that holds the key of David. The one that has the key of David. Trying to tell you, the other day you came to the synagogue and they refused you from entering. Don't bother yourself. I'm the one that has the key of David. I will open it and nobody can close it. And when I close it, nobody can open it. But he, he didn't stop there. After saying the one who has the key of David. I, I just wanted to understand what he meant to the church in Philadelphia when he said I am the one that has the 
key of David. Is it clear to you now what he meant by having the key of David? That's a key in your life. He's the one that has the key to your life. Forget about what anybody is saying. He's the one who opens and nobody can close. And when he closes, nobody can open. He has the final say. I'm the one who has the key of David. The key of David is in my hand. It is not a mystery. He said, I have the key of David. Yes, sir? I know your works. Uh -huh. the, the, we are about to start the journey. I know your works. See, I have said before you an open door. Come. Come. Even from here now, without talking anymore, anything he reads now, you can understand it. I have said before you an open door. Uh -huh. And no one can shut it. No one can shut the door which I have opened for you. Uh -huh. For you have a little strength. The other day you went to the synagogue. They didn't open for you the door. But I have opened for you a door which no man can shut. Your people disagreed with you. They rejected you because of your faith. They rejected you because of your church. They do not want to communicate with you because of where you worship. The owner of the church said, I have opened for you a door. The door is bigger than your family door. The door is bigger than your business door. The door is bigger than your association. He said, no man can close it. He said, I have opened that door. Nobody. No man, no man, no man. The other day, the other day, the other day, they shut you out and down because of your feet. Don't cry over the doors that they closed against you. He has opened the door that they cannot close. Don't cry over the favor that they refused to you. He has opened the door of favor that no man can close. Can you stand on your feet and wave your hands? God is here. He has opened the door. No family member can close it. He has opened the door. No wicked man can close it. He has opened the door. No hater can close it. That door is open for you. As you wave your hand, the door will open. As you wave your hand, the doors will open. He said, door of favor, it will open. Affliction cannot close the door. I have opened for you a door which no man can close. He said, I have opened for you a door which no man can close. Uh -huh. For you have a little strength. You have a little strength. Uh -huh. I have kept my word. You have kept. You have a little strength. You have kept my word. You have kept my word. Uh -huh. And have not denied my name. You have not denied my name. He didn't say you have not denied the religion. You have not denied my name. The reason they shut you out was for my name. The reason they didn't want you to enter the synagogue was for my name. The reason they said you have no part in it was for my name. You did not deny my name because of the frustrations that you are seeing. Because of the challenges on your way, you did not deny me. You did not deny me completely. When they shut you out of the synagogue, when they asked you to get out and not to come in, when they disassociated you, you did not give up on my name. Uh -huh. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan. Somebody say, indeed. indeed. It's becoming more interesting. Indeed. Uh -huh. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan. Did you, hear, did you hear it? I will make those of the synagogue of Satan. Uh -huh. Who say? Who they say? Are, they are Jews. They claim to be Jews. They say they are Jews. Uh -huh. And are not. But they are not. Uh -huh. But lie. But they lied. Indeed. Indeed. I will make them come and worship before your feet. 
Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. They refused you to enter the synagogue to worship. I will make them to come to you to worship at your feet. Oh, my kadada. They refuse to come. Is, is, is it becoming clearer? I said, even if I don't talk again, only introduction, you can understand the whole book as you read now. He said, the dogs of the synagogue of Satan, who said they are Jews, but they are not alive. Because if they are Jews, they will know I am the Messiah. Do you, not, do you not understand what he meant? Uh, by they are not. He said they lied. Uh, because Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Uh, they know my voice. Uh, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. If you fail to follow my voice, uh, then you are not of my folk. Uh, he said they claim to be Jews, but they are not Jews. Uh, indeed, uh, I will not tell my father. Uh, there are things Jesus will say. Uh, my father will do. But this one, he said, I. I will make them. He said they are of the synagogue of Satan. They said they are Jews, but they are not. They lied. But you don't worry. Eh? Yes, sir. After he said they lied. Eh? Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. They will come to worship before your feet. Do you now understand why he's saying this to them? Eh? Come on now. Do you not understand why he's saying this to them? That they will come and worship. That means they went to worship and they were refused. And where did they go to worship? The Bible said they at the synagogue. So he said, I will make them come to worship at your feet. They will come to worship at your feet. Uh -huh. And to know that I have loved you. They will not just worship at your feet. They will know that I have loved you. I am not about to love you. I loved you before they rejected you. I loved you before they shut you out. I loved you before they said no to you. I loved you before they started speaking against you. I loved you before they started mocking you. But I will make them know that I love you. I will prove to them that I have love for you. I will prove to them that you are my own. I will prove to them that when they rejected you, I did not reject you. I will prove to them that when they said no to you, I did not say no to you. Oh, hold on. They said they are Jews. But don't be intimidated. They are not. If they are Jews, they will be in the program of God. If they are Jews, they will know where God is. I will make them know that I loved you. I loved you when they wanted you dead. I loved you when they wanted to end you up. I loved you when they didn't want you there. But they didn't know that my hands are on you. I will prove to them that I loved you. Oh yeah, read, read, sir. Because you have kept my command to persevere. You have kept my command to persevere. Uh -huh. I will keep you from the hour of trials which shall come upon the whole world. I will keep you from the hour of trials. There are trials that will come upon the whole world, but I will keep you away from it. He won't try me more than my faith. I will keep you away from the trials that will come upon the whole world because of what you've been through for my sake. They mocked you for my sake. They rejected you for my sake. They refused you for my sake. They called you names for my sake. For this reason, I will keep you away from the trials that will come upon the world. And the trials is here now. Oh, sickness is all over the world. Oh, people are dying at our afraid I will keep you I will keep you from the trials that will come upon the world you will talk what the world will not understand you will say what the world will not understand because anybody can die but I cannot die now they say hand over my head he that keep in Israel he neither slumbers nor sleep Those who dwell on the earth 
Take it easy. To text those who dwell on the earth. Uh -huh. Behold. Somebody I, I, say behold. Uh -huh. I am coming quickly. Somebody say quickly. Listen to me. To all the five churches we treated before. Eh? He always we say, Behold, I will come. It is only the church of Philadelphia that he said, I am coming quickly. It meant something. But I'll tell you what it means next Sunday. I'll tell you next Sunday. This word, quickly, mark it. I am coming quickly. To the other churches, he will come. But to the church in Philadelphia, he said, I am coming quickly. Tell your neighbor, my helper is coming quickly. I've been shut out for some time. He's coming quickly. I've been neglected for a long time. He's coming quickly. I've been mocked for some time. He's coming quickly. They've called me names for a long time. He's coming quickly. He's coming quickly. I will explain this word quickly. By next Sunday, you need to be here early. I want to talk about quickly. I want to tell you what Jesus meant by saying to the church of Philadelphia that I am coming quickly. I am coming quickly. I am coming quickly. He is not a man that he will lie. If he say he's coming quickly, he's coming quickly. It has become urgent. It has become critical. My God is coming. He's coming to give me some help. He's coming to give me some deliverance. I have a push in me. Oh, come on. I feel a preach coming, but I don't feel like preaching. Today is not supposed to be a preaching day. But I say push in me. Oh, there's a hand mightier than I. Oh, that has come upon me. There's a power in this place. Oh, it is becoming critical. It is becoming unveiling. It is becoming revealing. The power of God is in this place. I feel God all over here. For I am coming quickly. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast. Hold fast what you have. Uh -huh. That no one may take your crown. That no one may take your crown. Uh -huh. He who overcomes. He who overcomes. Uh -huh. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Now listen. Another word for synagogue is temple. Eh? When he said. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. The other day you went to the temple, they did not allow you to enter. When you are a pillar, nobody moves you. He said, whoever believes, I will now make you a pillar in the temple. You will be one of those holding the temple so nobody can move you. He said, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Do you understand it now? So, when he was talking to the Philadelphia church, they understood him clearly. I will make you a pillar. They say, in me, me that they didn't allow me to enter the temple, I will now become a pillar that nobody can move in the temple. Because when you move a pillar of the temple, you affect the whole temple. So that means, I will become somebody inside the temple of God that is higher than the temple of the synagogue we are nobody can move me he said I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God eh? and he shall go out no more and he shall go out no more do you understand it he shall that person will not go out anymore that means before they sent you out but i'm encouraging you i will make you a pillar and you shall go out no more uh -huh. i will write on him the name of my god i in... will write on him the name of my god uh -huh. and the name of the city of my god the and new the... jerusalem and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. 
which comes down out of heaven from which my God. Come down out of heaven from my God. Uh -huh. I, I will write on him my new name. I will write on him my new name. Now, they removed your name before. But now, I will write your And now, not just that I will write it, I will write the name of my God on you as a pillar in the house. So you become a symbol of God. In the synagogue, they write the names of people on their pillars. But you will become the pillar. Upon you, I will write the name of God. And as a pillar, when they see you, they will see God. Nobody can now move you from the temple. Nobody can now send you out of the temple. And nobody can remove your name anymore. Why? I will give you a new name. And where you will now be established is not in a strange place. But in the new Jerusalem that will come from above. From my God. Is this one clear? How many of you understand this Bible now very clear? That on your own you can read even Revelation now. And teach somebody. And when you are teaching, you teach with confidence. So I know revelation. Or you open it. The other day, somebody told you that revelation is a mystery. It's not mystery. How many of us are enjoying the book of Revelation now? You are enjoying it right now? Sure. I'll make you a pillar. I will write the name of my God on you. Why? Because you've become a pillar. And you are not to be moved anymore. Nobody can send you out. Nobody can take you out, out of that place. If you read it ordinarily and see nobody can send you out, I will make you a pillar. Write the name of God on you. You will get tired and you close your Bible. True of us. You just get fed up and you close your Bible. But when you understand it, even now, somebody's enjoying it. On your own, you can read it now. Eh? Okay, if you want, even without talking too much, if we read further, you will understand further. You don't need any other explanation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just give me one more. He who has an ear. He who has an ear. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. How many of us have the ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church? There's an interesting thing. If you are worshipping God in this place and nobody have laughed at you because of Jesus, you are yet to start. If nobody have mocked you because of him, you have not started. I'm being very real to you. Somebody must laugh at you. Somebody must mock you. Then you know you are in the right place. If you are in a place where everybody is saying, yeah, it's good, stay there, it's good, stay there, run away. It's not the right place. Because if you are in the right place, somebody don't want you to be in the right place. They will want you out of the place. Am I talking to you? But can I say this to you? Men may send you out of where they control, but they can't send you out of where God controls. Hmm? They can send you out of where they control, but they cannot send you out of where God controls. After this service, God will place you in a place where he controls. He will place you in a place where he controls. He will place you in a place where he controls. Some people have ignored you in the family. In the next one month, the same family will come to you for help. The same family that rejected you cannot do without you. After this meeting, the same family cannot do without you. 
They will beckon on you for help. They will run to you for succor. They will run to you for help. You will be their pillar. You will be their help. Somebody shout amen as you receive it. May the door that you need open for you. May the one that I need open for me. May the one that you need open for you. He said, I will open for you a door which no man can close. No matter how they hate you, they cannot close the door. After today, you will enter that door. There will not be confusion in your life anymore. You will locate the door, you will enter the door. You will locate the door, you will enter the door. You will locate it, you will enter it. You will locate it, you will enter it. You will locate it, you will enter it. They will not stop you by day, they will not stop you by night. No force of hell shall stop you. You will locate the door, you will enter the door. You will locate the door, you will enter the door. I call upon the God that is able. I call upon the God that is bigger than the biggest. I call upon the God that is higher than the highest. I call upon He that sits upon the tremendous of Jasper. I call upon He that is God all by Himself. You will enter the door, nobody will stop you. You will enter the door. Nobody will hinder you. You will enter the door. Nobody will stop you. Somebody shout, I will enter. Enough of the complaint, enough of sickness, enough of disease, enough of affliction, enough of this attack. Somebody say, Give me choice, I want to enter. Your father's altar cannot stop you, your mother's altar cannot stop you, family shrine cannot stop you, evil men cannot stop you, evil women cannot stop you. Evil powers cannot stop you. Somebody raise your voice and say, Give me a chance. <laughs> Everyone in this house, by the mandate of God over my head, nobody will stop me from entering the door. Oga, I stopped you. I stopped you to talk to you. There is somebody here with chronic heart disease. In this meeting, that heart disease will disappear. It will disappear. It will disappear. They gave you something to eat in the dream. And that's how that issue began. But now, there's an oracle here. I came in the volume of the book that is written of me. I came with fire and thunder in my mouth. It will disappear. Somebody, Halaseto! Halaseto! And for the last time, calling your name 25 minutes from now that altar will collapse altar swallows altar like power swallows power that altar will collapse takabutu kusuke gazaka Sir, out of wickedness, somebody decided that he will follow your business. 
turn your favor to himself. Close down your business. Make your money fly like that. And what they arranged and cooked in their coven seemed to be happening physical. Everything is scattering right under your nose. Everything seemed to be shutting down. You can no longer see your money. You can no longer see the money which yourself, you didn't send somebody, traveled out of this country, bought your goods, and they came. You sold your goods, but you can't see your money. And the question is, what exactly is going on? The world we live in is a dangerous place. It is not easy for somebody like you to come out considering your background and where you are coming from. But sir, it is good you are here now. Amen. Amen. The, the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Sir, here and now, I release a word of prophecy. The same person who used spiritual means to walk on you, that your money is diverting to, I turn it. Amen. Today, a man that was counting millions on his of his own is now indebted to people. Is a lie. God will turn it around. Amen. God will turn it around. Amen. I sit in the place of my office. Thank you, Jesus. I look into the arrow that Thank was shot. They shot it from here. And they sent it to Umaha, your hometown. I read it and said it will happen like this. But my Bible says, Who is he that say a thing and they come to pass? when the Lord has not spoken. I sit in the place of my office. Amen. I cancel this devilish arrangement. Amen. Amen. I want to send a message to your office. Sir, where is your office? 62 Damfodio. 62 Damfodio. Aba. Aba here. Yes. Matumbra Ankoto Kozukete Yalaba. So if your goose enter, that's where they used to come. Yes. In the next 14 days, the same breeze that blew and scattered your money will blow. Your money will begin to die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Raise me your right hand, everybody, wherever you are. There is a force that said no to you, but there is a God that sent me to say yes. There's a power that said you will not rise, but there's a God that said I should come and tell you that you will rise and shine, for your light has come. The light of God shall be risen upon you. You will shine, you will not go dim. You will shine, you will not go dark. You will shine, you will not go low. Your case is hereby. Come here, son. Do you believe in me? Yes, sir. The place where you're building your house. Somebody was sent there to crack a block and pack the sand out of the block that they already laid. And they said that you, you will start, but you won't finish. And if you finish, you won't live in it. But they didn't know that today you will meet me. They didn't know that today you will see me. I scratched their life the same way they scratched the Amen. block. I collected the same way they collected it. Amen. Under 48 hours, Prataka Zagoto Yedi. Amen. Settle. Settle. Amen. Settle. Amen. Can I 
talk back me back me as you are backing me now every force in your lineage in your family killing male children that right now they do not want any male person to be alive from the time of your grandmother to this generation and to generations people die and die and die both young and those who are supposed to get old but they don't get old as you are backing me now I order in the realm of the spirit as a voice and not an echo the entire family shall back death the entire family shall back death people are running here scatter crying the one who died now was not sick people don't get sick they just die wake up in the morning and you hear that he didn't wake up what killed him nobody knows it is death in the family that want to wipe out everybody and the interest is to close the family so that strangers will come and eat where they did not so but I hit my leg on the ground and I said no as she is backing me now the entire family is backing death they will not record anyone again Nika gosi si Everyone under the influence of my voice. Any voice calling you from the grave. That voice will cease now. Raise that your voice. Shout that amen three times. Sir, it, it is only when a man have been through some things, gathered some experience, that when you meet people like us, you have value for us. Anybody who has seen some nothing, Anybody who has seen nothing. When the person sees us, most times, to the person, the person will be imagining, is this really happening? Is this serious? Is it real? Are you sure it's true? But a man who has been through things, a man who has seen some things in life, and you encounter us, you have value for us. At the middle of that night, when you called me, up until now, you may not know I know you are the one, but I know. It was death that came, and you saw yourself going. You couldn't even talk out anymore. It is at such time you make use of what you have. If you have a God, that is the time to call on your God. When you called, and I took the call, and I told you, hold on. I wanted to give you a sample. As at that time, you can't stand up, you can't go to anywhere. Even if it is something of hospital, you can't go. But what happened to you? Listen. Listen. Any spiritual arrow coming from anywhere to hit you, that arrow will die right now. Yeah. Your system has not been in order. Yes, that night, I gave you relief to leave. And I told you, that you will be fine that time. Now you are here. Doc, I want to talk. Please. 
Can I talk? Yes, sir. I want to operate in the place of my calling. I want to do what he called me to do. Your system. Don't worry, sir. Don't worry, sir. Leave him, leave him. Leave him alone. So go get water. Drink water. After drinking water, two minutes later, after you drink the water, here, no, 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 no. After two minutes, you will know why I'm the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of talking at you. You know. Hey, you, 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 you touch me somewhere. Oh God, let me touch you. Let me touch you. You touch me somewhere. He said, I've always known. I know. I know. And you can't tell me you know. And not feel it that I came. I didn't send a representative. The thing is getting tougher every day. Okay, there is calmness in your system now. It is automatic. Go eat. You've not been eating. Eat, and if you want now, go and eat here. Yeah. If you want to get to your house and eat, go and eat. Eat, relax. Nothing will happen to your system again. Yeah, yeah, you, can go, you can go, sir. Gradually, I'm drawing you, but I can see that it appears you are becoming serious now, right? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. You are becoming serious. Now, that time, you were busy. They were carrying you from this hospital to this hospital. That now, that you are steady coming here, can you see a difference? Yes, sir. Now, listen to me. Don't let anybody deceive you. Come, my dear. Everybody in this house, look, look, look at her. The way she is looking now and how she was looking the very first day here. Is it the same thing? No. Eh? No. That is why the truth of the matter is that you, you, you can doubt anything but nobody can doubt proof. Nobody can doubt what your eyes can see. Face me, my dear. Do you love grace? Yes, sir. You love grace? Yes, sir. I will strike a deal with you. Now, I will quench that which is eating you up. But I want you to think very well this night that after this time, you will not distance yourself so much again. Think, think. I want to give you a whole night to think. But you see this night, eh? You will sleep like a baby. Amen. You will sleep like you've not been sleeping before. There is a kind of sleep you will enjoy this night. And it will be clear to you that the man standing with you is not an ordinary man. You will sleep very, very well like a baby. By 12 on the dot tomorrow, it will not be like other times you call me and you will not get me. If you call me now, you will get me. But by 12 on the dot tomorrow afternoon, call me and tell me what you have decided so that I will remove that thing from here. And immediately I remove it from here, you bounce back and begin to jump up and down again. But if I don't see you again, like you used to do. But this night, 
you will sleep well. Huh? Oh, yeah, go. I'm sorry, I don't want to get you angry. But there's a wicked sin here that I must break. There's a sin. That sin is making this place to be very hot. That sin is responsible for locking your womb. Can I break the sin, man? I don't want to get you angry. Sir, I'm touching the stomach of your wife. And I said, I want to break the shame that I see. Yes, sir. She can't see the shame, but the shame is in silver color. Yes, sir. Very thick and strong. Yes, sir. Anytime the shame turns, her stomach will turn. It will become very hot. Anything that tries to enter will disappear. Twitter! 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 Are you shame? However, you entered here today, your time has expired. The chains has come together now, and as they have come together, she will feel a little calmness in her stomach. But that's a satanic trick. In this walk, I'm a senior officer. I'm not a youth copper. Neither am I John Bosco. They cannot play me first one. This shame must leave you. This is the reason for these 11 years. Oh yeah. You will fall out of her now. When are you people going back to where you live? Where do you live? Benin. Benin. You came from Benin. You're going back tomorrow. My dear, can I touch your stomach again? Eh? Eh? Don't look at my hand, look at my face. I'm the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of talking to you. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah, go check yourself from that thing when you will go. Why you're seated in church? You check it, check what is going on in your stomach. You will know you're coming all the way from Benin. Come to come and see this man. It's not just ordinary. God bless you. Congratulations, family. God bless you. You got time. Everybody be upstairs. in your hand. You call for life. I don't doubt You don't need a man. to advise you. If you listen to my advice now, it will help you. I will talk to you on three major issues of your life. But one is most important to me. You always return back to your house very late in the night. Stop it now. Somebody is planning you. I'm a prophet. I'm not a member of the fire brigade. 
you always return back to your house very late yes, sir. in the night. Stop now. Start returning home early. Somebody is planning you. If I were to be a small prophet now, I would ask you to run, hide. Don't run, don't hide. I want to agree on a time with you when you will be returning home. Let me cover you till that time so that if you fail the time, you're on your own. Choose, choose your time. Talk to me. What time will you be returning home? 7 o'clock. You said 7. 7 p.m. From morning when you will leave the house to 7 p.m. The four boys they have sent to look for you, monitor you, and do what they want them to do will not see you. Enter your house by 7. Enter your house by 7. Number two, I want to talk to you. I'm the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokrado. Do me a favor and do yourself a favor. From today, you will make a promise to me and I will pray for you. Promise me that from this moment, you will no longer beat your wife. Are you promising me? Do you know me very well? Eh? You know me very well. Are you promising me that you will not do it again? Each time you beat her, you scatter something for yourself. Each time you hit her, you scatter something for yourself. You don't know it. You beat her out of anger and frustration. Most times, not because she has done something too wrong, but because there is an existing anger and frustration inside of you because of the way things are. But each time you hit her, there is something you are spoiling. I want you to stop beating her. Let us try for two months. You are promising me. You are sure. You are sure. If I seal it and you go and fail, it will not be good though. You will not... You will not touch her again. You promise me. You promise me. Okay. Then the third one. There is a spiritual big hole in the family where you come from. That is what you have struggled with all this while. Spiritual big hole. As I'm talking now, cast your mind to your home. You know what has happened. You know that nothing, nothing. There are some things that I cannot even say that is happening in the family. I know them, but to keep your image, I will not say them. Is it true? Some very deadly things. Some things that cannot be explained. Some things that can make somebody wonder happen in the family. It's a big hole. The devil put the hole there. It is swallowing a lot of things. Look at you. Look at the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Toknadu. Many of you come to church but you don't know where you are coming. This is not a ceremonial place. This is a place of help. This is Zion. Do these two things I ask of you. Return back to your house early. Stop beating your wife. I speak right now. That hole will seal completely. Amen. It will not only favor you, it will favor every member of the family. Amen. That ancient case in the family that is making everybody to feel bad and ashamed, eh? I can still solve it. It's not too late. I'm the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokunadu. You know what I'm talking about. It has to do with your root. I can solve it. Show me two weeks without beating your wife. Two weeks 
of returning home early, then come here. I will only say, go. Before you get home, you won't see it again. God bless you.